I decided to do this special folder of videos called interviewing you or how to do your business communication that would be a little bit like a classes on how to communicate when you're looking for new opportunities how to write how to express yourself how to behave yourself in order to get what you want mm. The reason that I'm making these videos is because I received quite a lot of offers to hire someone, quite a lot of uh, people email me their resumes and they're looking for opportunities. Uh, and, and some of those I'm going to share with you today. Of course, I will keep the private information of those people private. Before I start, you can subscribe for $7.99. And you could see how I handle my own interviews where I provide services for what are my rates on the folder called companies and reviews. Uh, you are also going to see how I keep myself in shape. This is called weekly medical grill. You're going to see how I exercise in five languages. Also, there is a folder where I answer your questions, creating videos, especially for you, my members. And another one dedicated to interpreter help said that said that this is for members only if you are spanish english medical interpreter and you'd like to have a training in two languages spanish and english you can click on the link below on my platform called thinkific you can purchase a bilingual training in spanish and english for 47 dollars uh, and then I just launched my new store. If you like to purchase some of my merchandise called serotonin, you can click on the link below and purchase something nice with the positive vibes. Said that, today we're going to start talking about interviewing you guys. How people act when I interview them, what is okay and what is not okay. So I had someone reach me out on Instagram. Reaching out is a great thing. It's a plus. So whoever reached me, even if I don't need them right now, if there's someone interested, interesting to me, I can create a project for them. I can use them. I can make them work. I can make a project with them. I can be inspired with them, for them and all that. So it's a great thing to reach out and and I do appreciate that and I always give a chance to people who reach out to me if they have the correct attitude. So I'm going to read what this person said to me. Hello, my name, I will change the name. Hello, my name is Anna. I'm a student at METEO, International School of Medical Interpreters Online. I would like to find a volunteer English-Russian opportunity. I'm fully bilingual in both languages i will use i am fluent in both languages not fully bilingual but anyway that was just an expression i said maybe she was just sending it to so many times let's not keep there i said well you know what i do have a channel maybe i can use you for some project i was thinking why not i can do it myself but i can also pay someone it's not such a big deal for me right so uh me and this person had an appointment i said okay i will call you monday although it was saturday and this person keep texting me like i had my saturday free to do this a lot of people are not very how to say um, aware that maybe you have a day off and even though i keep repeating it she continued texting me and kind of i feel like this insistence and persistence and i had to said i'm so sorry i'm very tired i will talk to you monday anyways uh i i went online after i finished work monday and i was like okay uh is it good time can you talk she said oh yeah sure just call me so we did the interview through instagram you know you can do video calls there right now for me it doesn't matter if, if she wants to use zoom google i was like yeah let's just do it here it doesn't really matter to me don't worry you don't have to be so formal you don't have to be formal, but you still have to look tight and professional. This is what I believe when you are going to do a call, even if it's for a volunteering position, you still have to look professional. You still have to look someone that I want to deal with, correct? So um, 
the first thing that I saw when I called her it was she looked not very well her clothes were not very tight this person just didn't look very presentable you know this type of people that if you see them on the street you don't want to talk to them because they give you this strange vibe that they don't care about themselves the hair as well it was very odd so just have in mind if you're gonna do a video call um look tight you don't have to wear trademarks you can wear a white shirt just make sure you look normal if i want to say that i hate this but just look pleasant when you look at yourself in the mirror this is what i do when i create the videos do i like myself do i look pleasant to myself if i if i didn't know me and i see me on the street would i like to talk to this person is this person look pleasant is this person look someone that i want to talk to this is how i check my look if it's someone that i would like to talk to if it's someone that i would like to work with or hire or just know if you don't look well don't do the video it says you prefer voice i don't care i can do voice as well but if i'm gonna recruit you for a video and you look bad i don't want to say poorly but you look like after a storm <laughs> let's express it like that you understand that my desire to to do this with you wouldn't be like oh i'm so excited you know anyways that was the number one thing number two thing it was obvious that she was in one of those buses i personally been to san diego i like to go there several times a year she was inside of the bus and using the bus wi-fi <laughs> just guys i just want you to know that the way you present yourself this is how i'm gonna decide how much i'm gonna pay you not only me but any other company that want to take advantage of you and want to down pay you and and not pay you or whatever is the case if you use the public wi-fi the service that you're gonna provide will be the same level this means scars poor bad and for this type of a representation even if I wanted to give you $30 an hour, you're not worth even $10 right now because of the way you handle that. The way you handle these little seconds of moment is show me how you're going to handle the future assignments that I give you. And I don't want to give assignments even to volunteer that is going to be that bad because my reputation is worthy, because my time is worthy and I don't want to offer bad things to anyone. I don't want to present bad things, right? So if there is a company there on the other side that is not me, that doesn't care about those things, you don't have a future in this company. You don't have a space to grow. So said that, I said, okay, we are here, as they say in Bulgarian, which means in English that is very funny. It's a proverb that it means if you... In Bulgaria, there is this dance that you hold hands with your mates. Thousands of people dance together. It's called Horo. And usually, if you start to dance it, you can't just drop because the people wouldn't let you stop dancing. You have to wait the whole dance to finish. So, in this case, I just use this proverb. It's very funny. If you start dancing, you have to finish the dance. So, I was like, okay, let's see. Maybe... Maybe she just had a bad moment. Let's see her knowledge. Let's give her a small test. The reason why I wanted to test someone that is going to do the translation, I wanted to see their cultural level. It's not like I need her to know 100% of the terminology. But if she doesn't understand what it means on either languages, means to me that she's going to use automatic robot translator. And the opportunity for her to make huge error is larger. Less knowledge this person has, less precise and professional and sophisticated would be the result of her job, even if it's translation. So uh, I will give you the, I will just read you the terminology that I test this girl. So you can imagine if somebody call you and want to test you. This was, in my opinion, easy test. 
but uh, easy compared to the most complicated one because I, I believe it was doable. Mo most of you guys can do probably 70% of that in your target language. You can try to do it with me right now. Fever, chills, rush, HIV, disposable needle, tooth repair, cracking, jaw fracture, risks and hazard, anxiety, pain, nerve damage, vocal cords, numb, gums, chewing, confusion, memory loss, headache, moderate sedation, scarring, cardiac arrest, hoarseness, and legal representative. It's about 25 words from which this person had one, two, three, four, five. She had correct six. You're going to say that I am pinchy pointy and whatever you want to do. But for example, this other person that I work with, Jose, I'm pretty sure she, he can do 100% of those words. Uh, so it's not about the money at one point. If somebody doesn't know what they're doing and what they're talking about, for me, will be training this person it wouldn't be offering her a position because she would do so much errors that for me the time that i will waste in her will be investment in training not not receiving anything beneficiary right so uh also another thing she kind of tried to play smart saying that she can't hear me properly and she asked three to four repetitions to each word because obviously she didn't have the memory. She didn't have the terminology, so she didn't know them. And I will repeat, I think this test is on the bottom of easy one, maybe the jaw fracture, I think, or what else? Hoarseness or chills. Maybe these are a little bit more specific, but the rest, I think, most of people would know. Uh, but anyway, she didn't do so well. And I tell her, you know what? It was not so good. I think you will be challenged to do any kind of project because you lack of knowledge. Anyways, she said to me that maybe she can call me back in one hour. And I said, uh, your line is bad. Let's disconnect. We did disconnect this in the video call. Um... So, and then she's texting me, I like to find a part-time interpreting or translating job. Can you please help me? So, you just had an opportunity with me, which it didn't work quite well because of the way you look, the way you speak. Uh, but I said to myself, I forget to tell you guys, I decided to test her also in Russian. So, I was doing the test in English and I said, okay, let's speak a little bit about in Russian. Tell me about yourself. So I noticed that she was fluent in this speaking Russian, in communication. She was better than in English, but she was still having this hum hum moment. Also probably because she was very young. She was better in Russian speaking compared to English, but she still didn't have the knowledge. Anyway, she asked me to help her to grow and find a position. And I said, you know what? I'm not a free service. And to invest that, this means to train you. And I'm not so sure if I want to do this right now. She said, um, well, how much it costs for you to train me? And after your courses, can you guarantee me job placement? How much is going to cost me? So this word guarantee, it was the one that for me, it was I'm not going to lose time with this person. The reason why is because this show me that this person is lazy. There is no guarantee in life. Even if you go to the university for five years and you pay $100,000, of dollars, 
you do not have guarantee that you're going to find a job on your specialty. The fact that you study maths for 10 years doesn't guarantee that you know how to summarize or do matrix or do functions or do basic statistic calculations. There is no guarantee in life. There is no guarantee that if I train you, you're going to grow and learn and start to take care of your skin, of your hair, of your clothes. Is no guarantee that you're going to look tired. Is no guarantee that you're going to take breaks when you speak. Is no guarantee that you're going to stop eating the words. This is why there is no guarantee that you're going to have a job. Because nobody on earth can guarantee that you are going to make the effort. That you are going to take the steps that I'm telling you to take. And that you're going to do the job to grow. This is why I said no to this person. Uh, I knew I don't want to do this anymore because of her way of behaving. Of her way of talking. Uh, and then she continues say, I said, you know what, I'm not so sure I'm motivated to do this. And it's not a question of money in this case. No, it's not. She said, does your training guarantee me a higher job after her paying job afterwards? So a person that can't find a volunteering job because of how bad she's acting, she's looking, she's speaking. She want to guarantee that she will have a higher job job payment which is ridiculous guys you have to know that before you want a guarantee for higher pay job you have to feel grateful to get any opportunity because whoever hire you with this level would struggle she was struggling speaking simple things in english and i was just imagining that um she's in one of those calls where they are shouting on both sides to each other without pauses. I was just thinking how this person will handle that stress. She already stuttered when I'm very calm and welcoming and say, don't worry, it's, it's just a chat, it's a formal chat. I want you to relax, right? What is going to happen if you throw this person in one of those stressful situations? She's going to cry. Or just forget to speak of course I tell her there is no guarantee unfortunately uh, but I don't feel motivated to do this for you yes I I could ask for money and waste my time to train someone but I don't want to waste my time training someone that I'm not inspired to. For example, William. I was inspired to train William because when I offered him to do videos, he was ready. He said, hey, let's do it. And when I offered to pay him, he said, no, I don't want you to pay me. I want you to train me. And yes, I did train William. And yes, maybe we should do a video with William when he talk about what changes in his life, in his salary, in the numbers. Uh, after my training although we didn't we have two more videos and one more hour of a training but I think he understand what I was talking about and I am so happy and proud of you William I feel like I am successful with you I feel like I'm part of your growth and I'm so proud of you because of that and I'm inspired by you even though you're like 18 years younger than me yes you inspire me because you're a very intelligent young male and this is when I'm inspired to do the training. And yes, when he asked me to do it, I, I didn't want to. I was like, are you sure? Yes, he was sure. And I was like, okay, this person deserved that. And I did it. And I'm happy because I feel part of his success. That was the story number one for the Russian. And then I received another offer on my email. I'm just going to comment on that. That was a person from Ukraine she, uh, sending me his email. Okay, so I have this person. Hello. He, he said my name is Pavlo. Pavlo from Ukraine. Very nice. Once again, somebody reached out. 
uh, and said to me, uh, blah, 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 this is my name, I have so much experience, which was not so much. Uh, but, um, but he was proud to acknowledge that. And then he sent me, not a resume, but CV. A lot of people doesn't know that in English it's called the resume. And in Europe, they use the curriculum vitae, which is the Italian word for resume abbreviation CV. So when I saw a CV, I already knew that this person didn't have much experience and didn't know the difference between the CV and, and resume. Either way, uh, I opened this resume and the resume looked a little bit like uh, one of those scratch things that I would So I don't know if you guys know, but I study, I have a master degree. I am business manager yes i know exactly the process for screening i know what recruiters look for in a resume i done one year of a training in my university how to screen the levels of screening the resume the interview i did this on the other side so i know professionally what happens on the other side so the resume of this person in my opinion as a recruiter and i used to work as a recruiter in europe was I would call it poor. It had an American structure and it didn't have the, the picture as a CV because the CV in Europe has a picture. The resume usually is without a picture. So he tried to update it and make it look more re renewated, let's call it more informed, but it still was very, how to say, uh, he said studied in which university name of the university what he studied which year he graduated did he graduate what he achieved zero nothing then his work experiences was below that nothing much the com it, it says some year it was on the left side he structured years and then he said some company name i did translation or something like that this is it he didn't say the website, the telephone, the address, what kind of field was that. This this resume, if I was a recruiter, I would never respond to that, let's say. If I need to recruit 20 people, I would just trash this resume because it doesn't give me information. Also, it says translator on the top, but it didn't give the language combination if he translates versus Ukrainian or versus English or versus both. Even though he sent me all this information, it was not clear mystery so no recruiter is gonna waste time with you if you send an email you have to clarify what languages is versus which you do translations with if you do proofreading voice or whatever you do you should know your field don't expect me to guess it because i'm not i'm just gonna move to the next one said that um that was about the resume so I call it funny because it lacks of information. And then, and then he said he have references too. And both of them look like his neighbor typed it for him. It seems like he copied this and make somebody sign them. Like he copied it online. Because usually if I'm going to give a reference, I write my company name, my logo, what I do, what this person did in which field, what I appreciate working with this person you know and uh in this case it was just general like you copy it from some online what you should write in a reference it was not very very impressive so it looked fake the two uh, reference that he have but i said okay it doesn't really matter to me some people are great and they don't have a good reference i don't care about that so I went uh, and then he sent me, I don't know why, I don't know why, but there was few links of journals. He said, look samples of my job. Nowhere in this journal said his name or translated by whom. I don't know. I can send you National Geographic and tell you that this is my job, but this doesn't actually mean that it's my job. So it was kind of odd. I said, it doesn't matter. I said, okay, I replied to this person and said, can you tell me if you have any experiences in medical translation? I was willing to give him a job. Uh, 
and he said uh, he respond to me oh yes I have some experience where and how and when zero and then he says to me do you want to pay me and put a rate about five cents per word the way you present yourself is for one cent to be honest with you so if you're gonna be so lazy on your resume you don't care enough to make it proper I'm not gonna give you five cents I'm gonna give you zero cents I'm not even gonna work with you so he already tried to contract with me running one step forward with me uh, yes i was willing i was willing to give this person opportunity and make him maybe do quite good money with me compared to what he would do in ukraine right now uh and i said okay may i test you uh and then he's immediately jumping well do you use paypal can you pay me with paypal so i requested to use whatsapp and the reason why i wanted to have a conversation with him i don't hire people that i never talk to I don't hire people that I never have a conversation with, you know what I mean? That I don't see your face, you want me to hire you? This is a little bit strange. So I asked him if he have a WhatsApp. I wanted to have an interview with him and see how well this person speaks English, how well he's, who is he, you know? Sometimes, maybe if he's not such a specialist, but he's a nice human and I have a nice impression, I could still give him a job, right? So I was like, let me see who is this person. And I said, hey, can we have a small interview? Do you have what, WhatsApp? And he's like, oh, yeah, I do have a WhatsApp, but I don't want to use it. I prefer using an email. Uh, would you pay me through PayPal? Again, running one step ahead. So I said to him, before I give you a job offer, I have to test you. If I uh, don't test you, I can't give you any job offer. For me, that means an interview you. Uh, I am afraid if you're not ready for testing, I'm not ready to offer you anything. And it's okay to use PayPal. Of course, if you're going to pay the money to use PayPal, because I personally don't like to use PayPal. Said that, this person ghosted me. <laughs> so... He didn't understand that he actually had a shirt here. The only thing he had to do is have an interview with me. And then we, I was eventually going to pay him five cents. This is the truth. The reason that I said that I'm going to pay him less is because I wanted to see how this person will behave. We haven't had an interview and you already asked me for money. You see what I'm talking about? Because you you wanted me to pay you four cents per word, which is okay. I maybe would pay you that, but maybe if I talk to you, I would pay you more. Because you give me a nice impression, correct? And if you refuse to have an interview, and I give you an offer that is half of what you ask, and you still refuse to have an interview, I'm not just going to waste my time with you. That was my comments on the last few interviews, Russian, Ukrainian guys. I hope you learn from what I'm sharing here. I hope this video was useful. Thank you for being here. Do write me your comments below about your interviews. Thank you and have a good day. Bye-bye.